Hey, what's up there, guys? It's Barkley Barrington the Third. And there is no one that does it better. Today's a super special day because today we're doing a complete grow guide. So sit back, relax, light up a medicinal joint. And let's do this thing. Alright guys, first things first, I want to say thanks to all my subs, everyone liking the videos and watching my videos. It means the world to me. Uh, I make these videos for you guys. I just want to help out as many growers as humanly possible. Thanks guys. Put enough of the jibber jabber, let's get right into it. Let's check it out! Alrighty, first things first, you're going to want to decide if you're going to be growing from clone or from seed. Uh, clones you're probably going to get from a friend or a dispensary. Whereas seeds you're probably going to get online, which I'll show you how to do here in a sec. But first, let's get into the differences between clones and seeds. Alrighty, first and foremost you have clones, which are going to be an identical copy to the mother plant, guaranteed to be female, and they're also going to have an established root system. Having clones and even a mother around is nice because it gives you the ability to hold on to genetics for long periods of time. You can keep a mother plant around and whenever you want to smoke that flower again, you just take a clone, veg it out, flower it, and then you'll have your flower again. It's really nice. Convenient. And then you have seeds. Each seed's going to contain traits of both the mother and the father plant. And it's going to be a mix of both male and female seeds, unless you opt to buy the fem seeds, which are a little bit more expensive, but at least you can guarantee yourself females that way. The benefits to growing from seed, in my opinion, are you get a nice fresh batch of genetics, you know, phenotypes that people have never seen before. So you might find some truly original cannabis. And if you go through a period of time where you can't grow any cannabis, you can store those seeds for long periods of time and grow them later. I'd recommend getting a tiny little mini fridge for your seeds, and if you can't afford that, then just get an opaque container and throw it in your regular refrigerator. Should be just fine. Just a little quick tip here, guys. If you're choosing to go from clone, make sure that you isolate the clone and put it in a sort of quarantine area away from all the other plants. Because when you take that clone from another dispensary or another garden, it's going to have all the pests and all the diseases from that garden. Uh, powdery mildew, thrips, spider mites. So you're going to want to put it to the side for a few weeks, kind of watch it and make sure it doesn't have any of those issues before you bring it into your main garden. Alrighty, now you know the differences between seeds and clones, and you know that you're going to be getting clones at your local dispensary, and uh, let's move on. Alright, so you ordered your cannabis seeds, they showed up to your door, and now you're wondering, how the hell do I germinate these things? Like, what am I supposed to do? So, uh, let me help you there, and let's, let's go into it. Alrighty, so you're looking to germinate your cannabis seeds, and get some beautiful roots like you see right here. Alright. Let's start with step one. First, you're gonna grab a sandwich bag. Then you're gonna grab a paper towel that you can fold into a square like you can see here. Your next step's gonna be to soak the paper towel. After that, you're gonna wring it out until it's like a damp sponge, not too wet, not too dry. Now you're going to unfold your paper towel and you're going to slowly but surely put in each seed. And then you'll slowly fold over that top flap. Your next step is going to be to gently put the paper towel into the bag, leaving just a little bit of air in there. Then you're going to take your plastic bag and bring it to a dark, slightly warmer area like a cupboard in the kitchen or maybe a closet. Then you'll leave them there for three days. And by the time you check on them again, you'll have some big beautiful roots and your seeds will be ready to go into soil. Alrighty, your next step is to grab a few tinier pots. Uh, if you don't have any lying around, generally what most growers do is they go to Walmart, Walgreens, and grab some of these party cups that you see here. Uh, 14, 16 ounces, whatever. Uh, and then you're going to snip the bottoms of the corners off, and then it creates a perfect little pot for your seedlings. Good to go. 
Alrighty, now at this point you're going to have to choose a soil. I wouldn't recommend miracle Grow or any of the slow feed, slow release chemical fertilizer, you know, soils. What I do suggest is going down to your local hydro store or, you know, whatever you have and picking up an organic soil that has organic components like, you know, worm castings, compost, kelp, alfalfa meal, you know, stuff like that. Buy four or five bags, test them out, see what works best for you. As you can see, I'm a huge fan of the Nectar for the God soil line. Good shit. Um, just make sure to pick one that fits your growing style and you'll probably love it. I'll put a link in the description box. Alrighty, you got your germinated seeds. You got your pots, and you got your soil. So let's go into planting your seedlings, environmental conditions, lighting, all that good stuff. Okay, you're going to bury your seedlings about a quarter inch down, cover them with some loose dirt, and give them a light watering. And then you're going to toss a CFL bulb over it, or a T5 lighting system, and a fan consistently blowing over it, and you should be good to go. Once you germinated beforehand, the seedling will only take meh, a day or two to break soil, maybe three or four max. Here's another quick tip here guys. When you plant your seeds into your soil, you're going to want to use a powdered mycorrhizal fungi. What a powdered mycorrhizal fungi is, is a fungus that develops a beneficial relationship with the plant root system. The fungus will go deeper into the soil than the plant roots can and will seek out micronutrients for the plant in exchange for plant exudates. This equates to having a larger, healthier root system and a nice bushy plant. And of course a link to this product and every other product in this video is going to be in the description box. Alrighty, so we got germinated seeds in soil under lights with beneficial fungi added. And I just want to thank you guys for liking, subscribing, and viewing the videos. So uh, thanks guys. But enough with all that, let's get back to the video. Alrighty, so you have your seeds buried a few centimeters down into your soil in your handy dandy little party cups. At this point you're going to want to set up your tent, your fans, your lights, all that good stuff. So our next section is going to be buying gear. Okay, so when it comes to buying gear, nutrients, etc., all that good stuff, I generally try and tell people to go as local as possible. A good example would be your homie down the street that runs his own worm farm from the basement. I got worms. I beg your pardon? That's what we're gonna call it. Or you might have a friend that has a lot of compost on hand that he can donate to your cause. Also, you may have a sister that runs some sort of local grow store. Essentially what I'm saying is you can grow weed and also help out your local community and economy. Which is a, you know, win-win. Can't lose there, bud. Oh, yeah. That way you can support your friends, your family, and, you know, your community. I'm all about that kind of stuff, so. Oh, with that being said, you're not always going to have the opportunity to help out your community. So a lot of times you're just going to have to go to your closest hydro shop. Places like this are going to have everything you need, you know, bottled nutrients, fans, tents, soil, all that good stuff. And as you become a regular and get to know the shop a little bit more, you can chat it up with the people behind the counter. Uh, you'll oftentimes get discounts and freebies and stuff like that, so it's kind of nice. And even then, some states aren't going to even have hydroponic shops. Unfortunately, at this point, your only option is going to be to go through Amazon.com. If you have Amazon Prime, you'll see your items in a few days. And, uh, yeah, they have tents and everything else you'd need. When it comes to growing cannabis, there's a lot of fancy doodads you can buy. You know, meters, readers, applications, all that jazz. But for right now, we're going to talk about the bare essentials. Alrighty, dear guys and gals, here we are in our empty room. Uh, we're gonna kind of go through all the different items you're gonna need to get from the grocery store, or, or you know wherever you're buying it from. So first and foremost, you're gonna need a tent. I think for the most part, people go with a five x five, but you can go smaller or bigger. You can go skinnier. There's various wacky sizes of tents you can go with. Essentially, just find one that fits your situation. All right, number two, you're gonna need some quality soil. You probably grabbed it when you watched the first episode, but if not, let's go over what you're gonna want. 
What you're going to want is an organic soil that has organic components like, you know, worm castings, compost, kelp, alfalfa meal, you know, stuff like that. Buy four or five bags, test them out, see what works best for you. Alrighty, now that you got your soil taken care of, you're going to need to grab a few pots. I'd say a few of each size, uh, small, medium, and large, so I'd say grab a few of each, one gallon, three gallon, and five gallon pots. The idea here is to start in a smaller pot, and as the root system overtakes that area, you're going to transplant to larger and larger pots, and then you're going to finish out, aka flour, in a five gallon pot. And of course, for each pot, you'll need a saucer. Alrighty, so most soils you're going to find at the store are going to have enough nutrition to feed your plants for a good three to four weeks. So after you plant that seed, they're going to be good for that long, and then you're going to need to uh, supply some sort of nutrition, like a bottled organic nutrient, like you see here. Later on, you can switch over to something like uh, more advanced, like a soil food web feeding system, where you're purely relying on the soil food web, soil nutrition, dry amendments, and compost tea feedings. It's a little bit more advanced and there's more room for error, so I generally recommend that beginners start with a bottled organic nutrient and start with quarter strength and move their way up. Next on the essential list is light hangers, because, well, if you don't have light hangers, then you're fucked. Next, you're going to want to pick a nice LED light that is either full spectrum or can switch between veg and flower lighting. Of course, you can always go old school and do like a T5 for veg and a HPS for flower, but that's super old school and no one does it anymore. Mainly because LEDs have come a long way and a lot of people use them because they produce a lot less heat with the same results. Next on the list is going to be fans. You're going to need a few on the inside of your tent to circulate air so that you can prevent PM and make sure that you get, uh, you know, fresh air circulating. Also, you're going to need an inline fan, which you're going to use as an exhaust fan. That's going to attach to a carbon filter, all with the same size ducting as your fan. The carbon filter works by filtering out odors, spores, and other allergens. Alright guys, this is a fairly longer video, so uh, I feel like we earned ourselves a bong rip break. And we're back. Alrighty guys and gals, also you're going to need a pH pen. Don't get the cheapest one, don't get the most expensive one, something right in the middle usually works. You're also going to need a 3 or 5 gallon bucket, whichever you prefer, to mix nutrients in. As well as a timer, because for veg you're going to be doing 18 hours on and 6 hours off. And flour you're going to be 12 hours on and 12 hours off. Another essential item on the list is going to be a thermohygrometer. This is going to help you monitor humidity and temperatures within your tent. Last two items are going to be trimming scissors. I'd recommend using Fiskars, but you can use any brand you'd like, you know, cheaper or more expensive, whatever. Uh, and also mason jars. I would go with one liter mason jars. You can go bigger or smaller based on your project, you know, how much you're going to have to trim. But uh, that's the last two items there, fellers. So in my opinion, this would be the bare, bare minimum. Of course, this isn't including things like cloning gear, you know, so that you can keep your genetics going for long periods of time, and also a second tent, which is something you're eventually going to want to invest in so that you can be vegging and flowering both at the same time and keep a perpetual cycle going. Alrighty, zooming back in on our tent here where we have our seedlings buried a few centimeters under the soil line. Uh, they've been watered. We're going to put a little lamp over them for now. You don't need the uh, full LED experience yet. So if you have a dimming switch on your LED, you could use that and just start it at a low percentage and work your way up. And as they grow and develop a larger structure, you can introduce more and more intense light as time goes on. In my experience, after you plant your seedling, it's generally going to take between 24 hours and a week to see those seedlings break soil. Uh, sometimes they're going to take a little bit longer. I've seen them take up to two weeks. Those are with less vigorous genetics and uh, maybe older seeds. The nutrition within the soil can keep the seedlings fed for about three to four weeks, so you can get away with giving them just water for that period of time. And that leads us to our next little mini section, and that's a frequently asked question. 
A question I get asked pretty often is how often should I water? Should it be every day? Should it be every other day? Should I water once a month? Uh, well, let's go into it real quick. The reality is, is that it's not really about watering on a time schedule as much as it's about watering when the plant needs it. So what you should do is pick up the pot when it's fully watered, take a mental note of how heavy it is, then pick it up when it's fully dry, take another mental note, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna water when it's right in between those two weights. When it's not too dry and not too wet, what I like to call the Goldilocks zone. You want this slight dry period so that you can promote root growth and also so that you can ward off any sort of anaerobic bacteria, aka bad bacteria. But anywho guys, I've been trying to keep these videos right around the 10 to 15 minute mark. So I'm gonna call it quits and then uh, I'll see you guys next week. So uh, if you want to support the channel, I'd hit like and comment. Thanks guys, have a good one.